Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth installment of Intro to Coding. We have uh, Florian with us again and Ty with us. Ty, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us going. Thanks again, Leanne and team, and thanks for all your help with these webinars. Um, again, welcome to our fourth and final installment of Intro to Coding. Um, thanks again to CDW for their generous sponsorship of our classes. And I have gotten many questions about CDW and the meaning of CDW. And I will tell you that CDW means CDW. It used to be a different name. It used to be called Computer Discount Warehouse, but now the company goes by CDW. So again, thanks to CDW for their support. And I will turn it over to Florian Byers for our class. You just said CDW so many times. Like if, he, if this was a CEO like exercise, they'd be like number one ranking on the Google search for sure. If you type in CDW <laughs> at this point, like for sure. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah. Welcome everybody for the last installment of this particular course. We've done an intro to coding and to various tools. And it's been an intro. Like it's very much the idea of this course was get your feet wet, like play with some code, play with some tooling, learn how the tooling works um get your feet wet that's essentially the good uh, summary of this course like we haven't gone into stuff super deeply uh, there have been resources on the pages to take you if you want to do that and uh, we will be doing that in subsequent courses um to dig into it. that's going to be covered towards the end of the class um some more um but for now um the one thing we haven't touched yet We've touched Python, we've touched VS Code, we've touched the Git a little bit, we've touched um, the command line a tiny bit. And the one thing we've not touched yet is HTML. And HTML is the language of the web, as it were. Um, so we'll be covering that today. Um, I'll be showing off some HTML tags. Again, it's gonna be an intro. Like you're not supposed to be an HTML master after this class. Um, there will be plenty of notes and plenty of resources to dig deeper, should you want to. <clears throat> Um, before we get into that, though, let me um, make a bit of an anecdote here, because I did something fun this weekend. Um, I've been playing World of Warcraft Classic a lot. It's like a new, well, not a new game. It's a, an old game that's been excessified by a couple of very um, overzealous German people, which is awesome. And I've been helping them with their translation efforts. And one thing I've been doing is some of their stuff is on GitHub. And as I was doing um, some of the things for them, I was reminded of our very first class because it was very, very much the Git flow that I explained to you all when we first covered it. So when I, there, there was, a, actually I'll go through the entire flow, just to explain how it worked. So um, I was on Discord with them and they were asking me, can you translate the, the German um, release notes for this and this thing? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. How would you like me to do it? You want me to send you a file? Or would it be easier if I make a pull request? They said, well, if you could do a pull request, that would be great. So then I asked them, okay, where is the repository? They sent me a link and I was off. I got the link to the repository. As I explained in the first lecture, the, the repository is the place both locally as well as online where your code is. And they sent me their online version of the code. Um, I cloned that. But then I realized I made a mistake because that is not my repository, that's their repository. So I can't just push new branches to it. It's, I don't have that right. I don't, I'm not a contributor. I've not been invited to that repository. So I can't just send um, changes to that repository. That's not something I have the right or the permission to do. So I made a fork, which essentially means I copied their thing to my GitHub account. I cloned that. I made a new branch that just only adds one file that has the English stuff in it. I wrote the file and then I made a pull request from my branch in my fork to their master branch in their repository. And that is essentially the entire flow that we also covered in the notes as well as briefly in the introduction of the very first lecture where you take something that someone's done you suggest some kind of improvement to it, and then you make that improvement and show it to them to see if they also think it's an improvement. If they do, they might merge your stuff. And now what you have done is part of their thing and you're credited in the history. People can look up who made that change. 
and you have contributed to an open source effort to a, a thing that's already existing that you have now contributed to that you have put some kind of effort into making better or making more complete and when i as i was doing that this weekend i thought of, of you all i was like yeah this is this is exactly when that might be useful uh so yeah <clears throat> that is me uh, just starting off with a bit of an anecdote here um before I get into HTML, we covered a Python last week. I saw some people um, got pretty far with it. Um, like some people had some questions on a Discord that went pretty well. Some people had uh, a couple of questions on the Slido that I tried to get to as soon as I probably as I saw them. I hope it wasn't uh, too long of a wait. Sometimes um, I've definitely learned a few things about Slido in my time, particularly the fact that the uh, cutoff point for your questions is quite short. I did not know it had that few characters uh, until I found out like a week or two ago. And at that point, we already had it so much um, essentially figured into everything that I couldn't really like easily change it. I'm going to probably go with something else for subsequent courses for that reason. Um, I mean, there is Twitter, there is email, and it's all on the website, but I can see how people might find it difficult to reach out that way. So I want a very similar, simple um, thing that people can just send questions into. So that's something for me to research in the uh, week off uh, that we have next week, but that's uh, for later. Um, so we did Python, uh, we, we looked through the script. I put the script up on the uh, class website, which will stay up by the way, after this session. Uh, it's just gonna be added onto um, as, as like, new courses come out. But before I dive into a completely new topic, um, I'd like to give a couple of minutes uh, for questions that have been um, encountered over the last uh, week. So if anyone wants to raise their hand who has a question about last week's material, about the stuff that they're doing by themselves this week, uh, this is the moment to raise your hand. Okay, everybody. Jeff. Yep, that's okay. okay. This is Leanne. I am going to turn the roll over to Jeff to work on hands. And we do have a few. Okay, perfect. Hey, I believe Alan had his hand raised first. So I'm going to go ahead and um, give him permission, permission to talk. All right, Alan, go right ahead. Um, you cannot currently be heard. Did you get the permission working, Jeff? Okay, there, there it popped up. I saw it. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. so I, I downloaded the file. I mean, I, I downloaded everything into a Word document where I go back and read it at my leisure. Not that anybody cares about that. So I downloaded the, the live.py files, uh, including, I, I guess, the MP3 file for Ansley's never going to give you up, which I happen to like, right. by the way. So, you know, <laughs> that probably tells a lot about me, but Good. so how, how do I execute that file? And then <clears throat> when, when I go to a command prompt and, and go into mm -hmm. the folder in my Dropbox folder where I downloaded all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then I type live.py at the command prompt. It, it's going to tell you it, you can't find it. No, it, I mean, it, it ran it. I think it ran it, but it, it doesn't start playing anything, though. So it, it, Interesting. So what you're supposed so, to do is uh, Python live.py. Right. And then <clears throat> at the end, if you need to make sure that the never.mp3 and the uh, live.py are in the exact same folder, they need to be in next to each other, yeah. as it were. Okay. And if, they, if that's all happening, then what should happen is your computer should play the MP3 file with the program it normally uses to do that. If that doesn't happen, then something odd's happening. Uh, uh, okay, so so just to make clear, so I'm in the command prompt. The path that's distributed, it, uh, that's displayed is my folder that everything is in. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I just type live.py and hit enter, or do I type something different than live.py and hit enter? You type Python space live.py enter. Oh, okay. So why does it not know that it, since it's got a PY extension to automatically invoke <clears throat> Python and start playing, which, you know. That I, sometimes does work, um, but not always. So I generally make it explicit. Okay, that's good. All right, that, that, that's it. I'll let somebody else have a turn. Thank you so much. Not a problem. All right, who else is there? 
Okay, I believe the next person with their hand up is Hazel. All right. Uh, I think you should be able to talk now. Or, uh, you may have to unmute yourself first, though. Hazel, hey, so you should be able to speak. You just need to unmute. Alt A is the hotkey, if you have it. Audio now unmuted. Okay. There you okay. go. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry. I pressed enter on the unmute, and I, I thought it would do it. Anyway. Uh, I signed up a little late, and so I tried to get the uh, recording from the first week, and I couldn't get it. It said it wasn't there. It said it didn't yep. exist. That's true. Uh, the first recording has moved to YouTube at this point. So it's on the uh, APH YouTube channel in the Abide playlist. Okay. Abide? Yeah. That's where all three videos are now, that, the sessions that we've done so far. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Okay, our next person with their hand up was Corey. All right, Corey, let's uh, <clears throat> 6, 11 PM. cover your question and then maybe you can move on slowly to, uh, actually we can do two more, we'll refine time-wise. Corey, you only need to unmute. Yes, yeah, can you hear me? Okay, um, I had a question about, um, uh, so the versus code, uh, they, to download the extension of Python, what's the difference between running the, the extension and then just running it on the command line? <clears throat> you mean um, using like the VS codes, a command to run a file rather than using Python and then the file.py? Yeah, yeah, because I, I'm new to this. Um, I just downloaded the Python um, and then uh, the versus code. So, and that was, to my understanding, I have to download an extension for that as well. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm trying, I'm just confused. What's the difference between having it um, in two different places? Okay, so um, the way that, the way that works is essentially you have VS Code and you have Python. They're two different programs. And then VS Code needs some kind of way to talk to Python. And it uses the command line commands internally to do that. And that's what the extension does. So the extension acts as a bridge between VS Code and Python, essentially. OK. OK, I'm just trying to make sense of this. Uh, All right. It, I go over this in the session, uh, second session as well. Like you may want to like rewatch that and see if that makes it make more sense. If not, feel free to come ask me a question uh, on Slido or email or anything you like. Okay. okay perfect. All right, have, one more question. Yeah, we have one last hand raised, uh, Donnie. Um, Your first video isn't working on the email. I'm sorry, what is not working? The YouTube video? Um, the link you, the link you sent on, you sent on the email isn't working for the oh, first second. Yeah, like I said, um, the the videos have moved to the uh, YouTube channel. You can find them there. The email links are there for you to look at until the YouTube videos are up. And then once the YouTube videos are up, those links become inactive and the files are removed. That's because um, we're only allowed to store an X amount of number of files on Zoom at any given point. So when the YouTube videos are up, we don't need those Zoom links anymore. You can find them on the APA YouTube channel. Okay. Um, yeah, we can, we can move on to uh, looking at some HTML then. So the way that works, it's actually kind of funny. Google, Google Chrome, untitled notepad. 
I've just made a notepad window because we don't really need the complexity Visual Studio Code adds. It com VS Code can add things like closing time. Actually, that all makes sense in a minute, but it can like add things for you. It can suggest things you might want to type next, which is super helpful if you know what you're doing. But if you're learning, I can find that that actually sometimes gets in the way a little bit, particularly in HTML. So we're not doing that quite yet. Um, what I will do is I will make a file. Uh, just say hello. Hey, hello, hello. hello. Just save that. Save as dialog. File name combo box collapsed. Edit alt plus n selected star .txt. And I'm going to call that uh, aph.html. Let's do that. C C call backslash u e r s users backslash l o r i flory backslash a p h f dot h t m l f dot h t m l notepad text editor edit hello. Okay, so now Land. where I was ex like last week, where I was explaining that Python is an interpreted language that can render different ways depending on how you open it. It's the same is true for HTML actually. So. If you open an HTML document in, say, Notepad or VS Code, you're going to see the code. If you're opening it with a browser, which I'm going to be doing in a second, you'll see the rendered or the interpreted version Hello. of that code. So the code has ran at that point. Um, there's no code in this file, it's just the word hello. Land. But if we were to open this in Chrome, which I will do now. Google, Google, Google Chrome. Open dialog. See backslash UARS user L O I Flory A P H F H T L and F dot H T L O. Hello. We do see the word hello in our browser. This is Chrome. F F .html, Google Chrome. F .html, notepad. And this F is .html. notepad. And now what I'm going to do I'll go over the next while is just I'm going to play with this file and I'm going to show you what it does in Chrome. So the way HTML works is it uses, um, it's, it's a markup language, not a programming language per se, it's a markup language. And there is a difference. The markup language defines structure, not behavior. So you, you essentially tell, it's essentially just regular text, but you surround certain bits of that text in elements not known as uh, HTML tags that change that element in some way. Like it gives it a different way of rendering, a di different way of representation. So for example, if I were to take this hello. Carriage return. O -L -L -E -H -H. And I were to add less than less. H1, H1 greater than H1 greater. E -L -L -O, character and then at the end of the hello, I do this again, but I add a slash between the H and the less than. So we do less than less. Slash, slash H1, H1 and a greater than sign. H1 greater. And we save that. F -F -F -H we now have the word hello. Hello. But if I refresh this page, heading level one, hello, heading level one, hello. We've made it into a heading one. And that is essentially the idea of how HTML tags work. You take a bit of text or a bit of content and you wrap it around with these tags. So an opening tag is a less than sign, then the name of the tag, then possibly attributes, which we'll cover in a second, and then a greater than sign, ending the tag, and then your text continues. So the text continues after the tag. That's the text the browser is going to show. And then once your tag is done, you do the same thing, except between the less than sign and the beginning, the first character of the tag name, you put a slash character. So the name is H1 in this case, heading one. You open it with less greater than, so less H1 greater than text, then less, slash, uh, less than slash name greater than. And that is how, pretty much all HTML tags work, except obviously it's not just going to be just text that um, gets put into these blocks as it were. So imagine if you want to make a book, like a piece of text clickable or interactive, all you really do is you just go through the text and the bits that you want to be clickable, you add tags around that make the, those bits into links, for example. We'll cover that in just a second. and. If you want to like take a bunch of text and you want to make it easily navigable, what you can do is you can put it in an uh, HTML document, find the headings that at least should be headings, and you can just put heading tags around them. And now you can navigate by heading. So this, this is quite powerful. This is a very simple technique to get quite a, a lot done once you know how things work. Now, heading level one, hello. HTML is not the end all of web development. There's a very closely um, related subject called CSS, cascading style sheets, which we'll not be covering today. Um, but it is important, for example, if you're doing accessibility work, what the difference is. So HTML defines structure, CSS defines 
visuals like layout and JavaScript defines behavior. So that's the three different ones that often come up. HTML structure, CSS looks, JavaScript behavior, and CSS. Cascading style sheets, as I said, is a different coding language that has a very different look to it. And that lets you set things like typography, font, uh, colors, uh, what elements should be where on the screen, um, animations, background images, background colors, things like that. Obviously, that is hard for us blind people to learn because it's very difficult to verify what you've done is actually working. Um, screen readers don't really show you um, a lot of the CSS that's happening. Um, there are some tools you can use to uh, make them work better. There is a developer toolkit add-on for NVDA that lets you see things like, is my element overlapping another element? What color does this have? Things like that. It's quite useful. I don't know an equivalent for JAWS, unfortunately. There might be one. I'm just not aware of it. Um, but yeah, CSS, HTML, you generally go hand in hand. Heading level one, hello. You can get quite a bit done with um, without CSS, though. Like the pages on the class website are mostly HTML. They actually don't look all that good, to be fair, but they get the job done. I can get notes to you guys and you can beat them. So that's perfect. Heading level one, hello. So now if I wanted to change this, let's, let's just play around with this file a little bit. .html. We have one line. Less h1 greater, hello, less slash h1 greater. Less h1 greater, hello, less slash h1 greater. Now if I were to go to the beginning less of, this, less, of this less. thing and just change the ones into a two. H1. Greater one. Let's do it here, at the two. beginning. H E L L O less slash H one greater. And one. here at the end. Two. Save it. F F dot H heading level two hello. Now it's a heading two. And obviously we can take heading ones and then add headings to heading twos below it. We'll do that in a second. But this is one tag we've been playing with, and there's several. Um, this is the H one to H six. There is a P for paragraphs, which you'll want to use a lot because. Otherwise, you leave the rendering of when paragraphs break up to the browser, which is not always a good idea. Uh, there is the A tag, short for anchor, which is for links. There is uh, IMG for images, and so forth and so on. There's a whole lot of them. So what we can do is we can add a couple and just see how they work. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the skeleton, as it were, of an HTML document. So heading level two, hello. When I said before that tags don't just contain text, this is true. Text can be nested, as it were. So you can have tags within tags within tags, like a matroshka ball, uh, like these Russian nesting dolls. H so if I were to H go in H here, level two, hello. Uh, back to the uh, document, F F HTML notepad. a document outline always begins with the actual HTML tag. HTML tag is the parent tag of all the other things. Let's so two, two. H slash if I go up here, oh, let's. Land, land, land. We make less HTML, HTML greater, oh, greater L M HTML, less HTML greater, land, less H two greater, land, land, and we close it out. Less slash HTML, HTML greater, land. So now this heading is within the HTML element. Nothing has changed. After after HTML, refresh. Level two, nothing heading level has two, changed. Hello. Um, it's the exact same document, just now it's more, um well-formed. And this is a problem with HTML. Um, browsers generally try to compensate for human stupidity and they're very good at that. So you can leave a lot of HTML out and still have it work and you're not going to get an error. And the problem with that is that a lot of accessibility things depend on HTML working properly. And a lot of the time, the reason it doesn't is because people broke their HTML somehow and they didn't do it right. And the browser isn't be really complaining. It's just going to render the stuff anyway. And you and me are the uh, are the problem. Like the people who have the problem at that point because it's working fine for everybody else. So why not for us? Because we actually depend on HTML being done correctly. So let's do it correctly. Heading level, heading level two, hello. F -f at the top, less HTML greater. Less, less. Um, land. the very very top statement. We usually need to give it a doc type. And we do that with the tag doc type in caps with an exclamation point in front of it. Less man. D -O -C -D -Y -D -E. Doc type HTML. HTML greater. Okay. So we're telling the browser the very first line this is an HTML document. It can tell that. 
from like everything else, but this is just part of the so-called HTML specification that you add this. Let's HTML trigger. Now, Land. an HTML document generally consists of two main sections. There's the head section and there's the body section. The body section holds the actual content of the page. So let's wrap our content, our heading into a body section first. Let's H2 trigger. Land. Let's H2 trigger. Hello, let's slash H2 trigger. Our heading. We're going to go up. Land. That was my mouse. Sorry let's about HTML that. Let's not, let's not, let's not type HTML. Let's HTML. Let's HTML. Let's HTML. I'm going to go um, let's body. B -O -D -Y. body greater. Let's H2 greater land. And we're going to close the body. Let's slash B -O -D -Y. body greater. There. Now we have a heading within a body within the HTML tag. Let's slash HTML greater. And this is where you can start seeing that nesting thing happening a lot. So there's like a tag within a tag within a tag. It's almost like tagception if you've seen that move. Let's slash body greater. The other uh, portion of the web page is the head. Let's body greater. And the head is Let's for HTML the browser to render certain things. Like in the head, you tell the browser where your CSS file is. You can tell it what the title of the page should be. You tell Let's it um, what languages, like what uh, spoken languages you're intending to use. Um, for example, Let's HTML greater. this HTML. Let's body greater. Actually, no, let's, let's uh, keep it for just a oh, little bit later. So let's, let's make a head element. Go up. Land. We make just above the body, we make a head. The head is generally above the body. And the head is the head because that's what the browser is going to read first. It reads the top to bottom, just like a code file. And the head is, well, the header. It, it heads off the page, as it were. And there's a couple things the browser needs to know to properly render this file. And one thing is, for example, the title. So right now, it just uses the file name. If I do uh, caps lock T, it says APH.HTML. That's obviously not a very descriptive page title, but there's nothing else it can fall back on. So it's using that because that's our file name. Now, let's make a head section and just make a new line, immediately close it so you don't forget. Less slash H E A D head greater. You're starting to see a pattern here. Less name greater, less slash name greater. That's always the formula, as it were. Land. Formula can be extended, and we'll see that in a second, but this is generally how it goes. Less head greater. Now, Land. to set the title, we use the appropriately named title element. So we do less title greater, our title, less slash title greater. Less T I E L L E I. I also need to learn how to type. T. Sec. T-I-T-L-E, title greater. O U R R space A W S O E awesome space W B M space E A T E page space less slash T I T L E title greater. I'm gonna save this. It says less title greater our awesome web page less slash title greater. Save it. F dot F dot H and refresh the page. Our awesome web page heading level two below. Our awesome web page Google Chrome. We now have a title. I did that with NVDA T to check the title bar. You could do similar thing with JAWS. I don't have the uh, shortcut handy by now, but it's uh, even visible in the all, in the alt tab um, list here. So I go, HTML notepad. Our awesome web page, Google Chrome. Our awesome web. Starting to look like a web page already. Now, there's quite a bit more things you can do here, obviously. What thing we can do um, that you've probably seen break now and again is we can set the language this page uses, or you can do this on pretty much any element on the page. We can do this on the heading that we used. We can use it on paragraphs. You can use it on a lot of things, but we're going to be using it on the same, uh, on the entire document just to show off how this works, but also how attributes work. So if you go up to the HTML element, let's, let's, let's doc type HTML reader. Let's HTML reader. This one, not the doc type one, this uh, HTML tag here. Now, if I want reader. to give this tag some more information to work with, very similar to our, uh, Arguments for functions. L M T H T M L greater. I go to the end of this thing and I give it a space. Space. And now I can add something to this tag that tells it something about itself, as it were. So in this case, we can set the language with the lang attribute because these are called attributes. Attributes are bits of information you give to a tag in order for it to do what it needs to do. So this is the HTML tag, and we want everything in this tag to be in English according to um, our page. So if a screen reader 
screen reader uh, loads this page, it's going to see that lang, lang attribute and be like, oh, okay, I need to, read, need to read this in an English voice. Spell, speed reader. If you've ever had it happen where you were on a Spanish uh, blog, for example, and you were trying to read something that was in English, but it gave you a Spanish voice to read the English text, this is probably what went wrong. They forgot to set the Spanish, uh, the English tag on that one, or on that one article. Maybe they couldn't. Maybe they were using a system where you can't change it for that particular article. But yeah, they were assuming everything would be in Spanish and then they changed their mind and wrote something in English. And your browser isn't going to yell at you if you do that. It's just going to be like, okay, this is apparently um, Spanish text. So I should tell screen readers to use Spanish voice. Space L -M. Now, obviously that's annoying and it's L -space. hard to fix because you know, obviously you can turn off your screen readers language detection, but that can actually be useful for some things. So L -space. that is one thing where people should be more careful with their HTML. Greater, carriage return. Greater, now, space. let's be Greater. careful. Let's put the actual language in here. L -A -N -G L -A -N -G equals, Man equals quote, quote, E N quote. N quote, quote, so, N E quote, E N quote, greater. Attributes take the format attribute name, equal sign, and then their value generally is uh, in quotes. And we're going to see that a few more times in a moment, after which I will uh, open the floor for questioning, uh, questions rather. I mean, you can question me if you want, but look. Yeah, let's uh, not go off topic too far. We have a title. We have a language tag, uh, an HTML tag that has a language attribute saying English. Let's title we have a head tag with a title tag in it. Let's slash head reader. Um, this is not the end all of a head tag. It does more things. Um, it does some rather um, complicated things that we don't really have the time to go into. But this can be Googled anywhere. Just look up like HTML skeleton and you'll see this plus a few other lines that'll be completely explained uh, by the time you read it. So I will show off one more thing and then we will uh, break for questions here. Let's slash HTML greater. Um, let's slash HTML, let's slash HTML greater. This is the end of the HTML tag. Let's slash body greater. This is the end of the body tag. Let's H2 greater. Hello, let's slash H2 greater. Here's our content. So we only have a heading. Oh, let's slash H2 greater. Character let's make term. a new line below the heading and just make a link. So a link needs one attribute to work properly, namely the address it should be using. Like, where is this link going? And we can show that off with the href attribute in the a or anchor tag. So I will start with an anchor tag, which is slash uh, less than a, less a, like this. A space. And now we need to give it an attribute, href. That's the HTTP reference for people who care. H -R -E -F, ref equals, equals, quote, quote. And now we need to give it a web address. So let's, let's go to Google, for example. We can do HTTPS, slash, slash, Google.com. Last time I checked, Google only has two O's. G -O -O -G -L -E, Google -C -O -M. Com. M. Return. We close out the quote. We close quote. out the tag with a greater than sign. Greater. And now, we get to the bit where the user is actually seeing what we're typing. So we put the text that the link should contain, that you should be clicking. So we could, for example, do click. L -I -C -A -C -A -E -O 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 space. Click here to go to, T -O to space. Google. T -O -O -G -L -E. And now the tag is done. So we need to give it a closing tag. Less Google less. slash, slash a, a greater. A greater. Enter. Now we have a link. We'll save it. And if I didn't make any mistakes, our awesome web page, Google Chrome. Our awesome. And I refresh this page. Our awesome web page, heading level two below. Visited link, click here to go to Google. Okay, well, it says click here to go to Google. Let's click it. Google site can access your location. Dot. Change the setting in the address bar. Alert, search landmark. Search. We are on Google, albeit the Dutch Google, but Google. Our awesome web page, heading level. All right, we've covered like 60% of HTML in like 20 minutes. How are everybody, how's everybody doing? Like, what are we, what can I answer? Brian, we have a, a message in the chat from Mohammed. Um, he is uh, asking the question um, about, uh, let's see if I can find it again here. Oh, demonstrating creating of buttons and input boxes in HTML. Yep, that's coming up. Okay, so we'll get to that shortly. Um, really quick, Florian, um, I don't know if it's possible um, 
to increase the font that's being displayed on screen? It's, um, in I know both you were the browser. In and WordPad, the... I know in WordPad it might you could probably do it. I know it switched over, but it's on, it's really small. It's like a twelve point font or smaller. Yeah, no, it's it's because you mentioned it. Like, I'll, I'll forward button submit it right now. Awesome web app app dot list dot html file edit sub format submit view submit format word wrap the font uh, word wrap double font uh, font size combo box edit alt plus s selected eleven. Let's see app dot html. What's that? Better eighteen might be perfect. Okay, can do. File edit format sub menu alt format word font f. Font size combo box edit alt plus s selected sixteen. Wait app dot html. That's better. Thank you. No problem. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if I can do this for the browser, but at least I can do it for this. Um, this is the code we have so far. So we have let's uh, let's re let's review let's doc type HTML reader. Our doc type declaration that tells us this is an HTML document. Let's HTML and equals reader. HTML tag which covers everything, nests everything inside it. Let's add reader. Head tag. Let's title reader. Title tag. Let's slash title reader. The title tag that says our awesome web page. Let's slash head reader. Closing of the head. Let's body reader. Opening of the body. Let's H2 greater hello. Let's slash H2 greater. A heading two. Let's ref equals HTTPS slash slash www.google.com greater click here to go to Google. Let's slash a greater. A link. Land. Let's slash body greater. Closing of the body. Let's slash HTML greater. Closing of the HTML. This is a summary of what we've done so far. Any questions? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Jasmine, uh, Katse is first. Sure. You hear me? We sure yes. can. Okay. Actually, um, since you went over the the actual full document, I my question I answered. I was trying to just clarify that each of the each tag that you were using for HTML is on a totally new line. I just yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way, and sometimes it isn't because there are tags, for example, strong and emphasis that literally just change the word to be like just change one word. And at that point, you will see them be in the same line as something else. But yeah, they can and often are on the same line, on different lines. So basically what you can do is like, essentially, you could write a bunch of text, put it in Notepad, put the HTML tags and document type on the top of it, and basically have that be it, right? So you could type the text first, or would you have to type it in Notepad first? Mm, you can add HTML text, text. text afterwards. Okay. Yeah, you can. That's that's certainly possible. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You'd want to make sure that you put your paragraph tags in the right places. But yeah, you right. can absolutely do that. Okay. Oh, Ooh. this opens lots of new doors. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Anyone else? Okay, Avery uh, Baggett is next. All right, perfect. Hi, um, so why don't you have to close the doc type tag? Uh, what's the bang operator do? Okay, so the bang operator essentially just marks this as a one-liner that says this is literally just a one-line string that says this is an HTML document. It's not really a tag as such. It's more of an a quick note to the HTML interpreter off in a browser that says, hey, this is HTML. So that's not a tag. It's like a self-closing uh, thing. It doesn't really do anything for the rest. Thank you. OK, Hazel Fields, you're next. Audio now unmuted. Um, I didn't have a question. Was the hand still up? It shouldn't be. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Sorry. Not a problem. OK, Armando uh, Vaez. And you can now go ahead and speak. Currently unmuted. Hello. Um, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so doc type, like, it doesn't have to have a space like less than doc type or, I mean, less than type exclamation mark doc type um, space HTML or. Yeah, it does. So I'll go through it. Let's go to my character. Less than D O C T Y P E space H T M L greater. Like that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I was just confused. Um, I'm, I'm, I know a little bit about HTML already, but I, I just, um, I'm just learning more about it today since, yeah. Um, yeah. No, oh, perfect. Good idea right. to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. 
System diet subtitles sub sub show sub, now in leave but leave button leave the mute button hold on <laughs> sorry it's all good did you want to take some more questions at this point we have uh, a few more hands raised yep i can take a few more okay or you can take uh, this pretty uh, leisurely uh khalid would you like to go next hello can you hear me i'm sure can. i can go ahead yep Hi, Florian. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm following up what you are doing exactly, the setup in your machine. Are you open? It? Do you have a file called APH, the uh, ap.html in Notepad, correct? Yes. And you opened it. So you created the HTML file, then you opened it twice, once on the browser and once with Notepad. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you type your your HTML code in the notepad and then you alt tab to the browser and then refresh yes so that is exactly what you are doing that's exactly what i am doing yes oh, okay just i wanted to make sure that how can you how are you i didn't hear the alt tab thing so i was wondering ah. how were you able while you are in notepad to read what is in the browser? yeah no i can do magic but not that much magic it's, it's a good question um I, I do alt tab between the two windows yes so that's that's good that you flagged that i didn't i didn't mention that so yes that's how i'm doing that and that would be the same even if I open the HTML code and not an uh, VS Code. Yes, you could you could do that with VS Code, and you can open it with a different browser. As long as you have both like an editor and a browser open, you can do what I'm doing, right? You just refresh the page after you've changed it. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. That's it. Yep. Did you want more questions at this point, Florian? Uh, sure. We can. Okay, uh, Louis Day, would you like to go next? Or Louis Do? I'm sorry. Okay, once a brief um, explanation of ARIA. Yeah, okay. Um, so ARIA stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications, and it's there for one reason, to supplement what HTML can normally do. So if we, for example, have something, like for example, web applications are getting more and more clever, like they need to do more and more um, user interface patterns that you'd normally find in regular desktop applications. And when HTML was first made, that wasn't really the idea. You can just like click things and have the text be hypertext, as in you can click things and it'll do things for you. But it's difficult to make that entire paradigm work for different, like difficult applications to master. Like you'd, you'd need to have some way of grouping things together. You'd need things to maybe give particular roles that HTML doesn't support. So for example, if you have um, a tab control, like if you have tabs within a web application, that is pretty difficult to do with just HTML. You need some kind of helper to make that read properly with screen readers and ARIA is that helper. So where I just show off that you can do a Lang attribute on any element to make it be in English and give it that extra semantic meaning as it's were. That's what we use to indicate that a particular text or tag has some kind of extra meaning or, or information attached to it. For example, that heading is a heading and it has a level of two. So we can get to it with the previous and next heading level two tag. That is a semantic, S-E-M-A-N-T-I-C, if you want to Google that, heading. Um, Aria does two things. Um, it gives you more of those attributes to essentially augment existing tags to do things they were normally not supposed to be doing. For example, you can say that um, an, an, a form field, which we'll be covering soon, has a label that is already on the page, but you can also make it be a label that only screen readers see, and that way you can give them specialized instructions. Um, the one rule of ARIA is don't use ARIA unless you have to, and that is essentially the golden rule that everybody in the industry breaks. So what ARIA is commonly used for is to mask um, problems in the existing HTML. For example, you can make elements in HTML that 
have no semantic meaning. Uh, div and span are those elements, division and span. And these have no meaning and therefore they're often used for um, web applications to just be an unstyled, undesigned element that you can do anything you'd like with. But obviously at that point, a screen reader doesn't know what element this is because it looks like a button and it acts like a button, but it doesn't read as a button. It just looks as a, as a clickable to screen reader users. So at that point, you can give that element a role attribute with button as the valuable, uh, as the value. And at that point, that button is a button according to screen reader users. And that is how REI is often used incorrectly. But um, its real use is to do things that HTML cannot natively do. So the uh, recommendation is always use native HTML as far as you can and don't start doing your own thing too much because it essentially steps out of the sandbox that your browser gives you. And then if you can't do whatever it is you're trying to do with HTML, look at ARIA to see if you can make it that way. Okay, Monroe, I got Okay, uh, Devin, did you have something else you wanted to uh, to say? You were unmuted. If you do, you can go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, with VS Code, is there a way to put in that boilerplate, uh, like a snippet or something? Uh, probably, but I wouldn't know what it is. Um, okay. Yeah, like the HTML is, and the doc type. There is something that. like. There's something like Emmet you can use. That is a uh, VS Code function that lets you, for example, specify that you want to make a list with five list items in it, and then you can just fill oh, them in. That's good. That's E M M E T. That's something to Google for that. And I'm yeah, sure yeah. there is a snippet for an HTML skeleton. I just don't know it off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. We have one more, Corey. Oh, Corey just lo lowered his hand, so I think he's okay. He's good. All right, perfect. What time? 646. Okay, beautiful. So actually, yeah, let's um, let's cover some forms then because um, it goes into a couple things we've already learned and it shows us a few new ones. Oh, someone wants to say something? Oh, no, it's just an errant unmuted person. Okay. Let's say, let's add, let's title greater awesome web page, let's slash title greater. Let's slash add greater. Let's title greater on awesome web page. Let's slash, let's slash, let's body greater. Let's h2 greater. Hello, let's slash h2 greater. Let's ref equals HTT land. Now, um, to make a button, there is a button element. So you can do uh, less button greater than the text or the other content. Often they put images in these as well. And then um, less slash button greater to make a button. Um, these are often used to fire off JavaScript events so you'd have to do uh you'd have to somehow connect your button to a piece of javascript code that will run once you press the button we can't really show that off right now because we don't have a back end and that'll be something we can cover in the uh next course oh foreshadowing and um <clears throat> so we're not going to be doing that but i can show you how an input text would work Let's for example plan. what we can do is the, we have the input. Actually, let's do first the label tag. So we have a label tag and a label tag generally goes with a, an input for like a form field of some kind. So the easiest way to do it, even though they come in another order is to do the input field first, then go up and do the label after because generally the label precedes the, the form element. But you need the form element to make the um, to make the label work, so it's a bit silly. Um, before I can get into that, we need to cover one more um, one more element here, which is going to be very important if you want to continue onwards with um, your JavaScript and your HTML and your CSS, for example. And that is the concept of ID and class. So an ID is an attribute you can give any element, except for HTML and head and body. No, no, actually body you can. Um, you might be able to give head an ID, but it, there would be no point because you can't see the head. But um, 
you can give most elements an ID attribute and that attribute is going to be a name because an ID is a name. You give one specific element and it is to it has to be unique on the page. Like again, your browser isn't going to yell at you all that loudly if you have more than one. It's just going to subtly break things like labels will not properly associate and things like that. But you're supposed to only have one ID. Uh, 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 an ID is supposed to be unique as in it can only happen once on a page. So you give an ID to uh, any element with the ID attribute. So it's very similar to what we did with the link. For example, if we go up to the heading here, we can give that heading an ID of ID is equals quote heading two and now two quote two quote greater. Now we can refer to this heading from different places as heading two. You would do that, for example, from CSS to style that particular heading a certain way, or you would do it from JavaScript to make the heading. Uh, say something else when a button is pressed, for example, it's a way to refer to that heading. And that's important because we're going to need it for the label element in just a moment. Class is similar, but class is more like a label that you stick on several elements that all have the same thing going on. For example, you can make, um, you can, for example, have six buttons and three of them need to be red and three of them need to be blue. You can give um, three buttons the class of red button and three buttons the class of blue button. And then in the CSS, you can address those classes directly. So you can say, I need all the red buttons to be red and all the blue buttons to be blue. You don't have to go button one red, button two red, button three red, button four blue, button five. That would just be annoying. So that's what the classes are for. You tell them, you group elements together that you want to do the exact same thing to. And that's particularly useful in CSS. Um, or to, for example, uh, in JavaScript, if you add a particular class to it, it'll look different. This is, for example, an inaccessible way to make a form field uh, turn red if you have a mistake in it. And therefore, it happens a lot, unfortunately, because it's visually and it's fine. So. The reason I brought this up is if we're going to use uh, input elements, we're going to need to label them. And there's two ways of doing that. One is has to do with ARIA. We'll cover that one last. And then one has to do with the label element. So like I said, it's best to do the input field first. Let's do that. Uh, the tag is input. So we do less input. So let's make it password field type. Type equals quote password password quote id equals password word field field password field quote and an input tag is a self closing tag which means you can do slash greater at greater. this point and not need to make an explicit slash input tag there's a couple of tags that do this that essentially don't have any content. For example, an image doesn't have any content because the um, attributes tell it where the image is, but you don't put any text text in the actual image. That wouldn't make sense. So you often don't need to put greater, slash. Um, an explicit slash image greater, at the end of that. You can just do it like this where you do a slash before the um, greater than sign at the end and have it be self-closing. Um, if I were to now save, our awesome web page, go back to our page. Our awesome web page. No visited link. Click here to go. No next edit. Visited link. Visited link. Click. It's not working. Huh. App.html. App.html. Let's slash body greater. Let's input type equals password. It equals password field slash greater. Our, our awesome web visited link. Click here to go to Google. No next edit. No previous edit. App.html. T. Let's slash body greater. Let's see why that's happening. Greater. Y. D. O. B. Slash. Let's carrot greater. Slash. Quote. D. Quote. Slash. Greater. Carrot return. Greater. Slash. Greater. Let's make it explicit instead. That's often the first thing I do. So now I've done it the other the way I've done the other ones, where I just say input slash input. And it's not showing up for some reason. So we now have a bug. 
Less ref equals HTTPS slash slash www.google.com greater click here to go to Google less slash a greater. Land less input I N T U T space E Y P E equal quote E A S S double O R D quote I D equals D I think I see the problem. I space space I D equals T A S S double O R D F I E L D quote greater. And that's also broken. There we go. Tick tick D L O S A P tick equal D I space quote D R O double S S A P quote. Our awesome, awesome web next edit field visited link. Our awesome web page visited link edit protected. There it is. So this is what I mean by the browser not really yelling at you when you have a problem in your HTML syntax. It's just going to do the best it can. And sometimes it's not going to be very smart about it. So in this case, I had a space missing between the end of the password uh, value of one attribute and the beginning of the next. And it just outright didn't show the field. Now, if I were to remove that explicit slash input, F -F -H -T -M -P -A -S I think it'll still work. Yeah. So like I said, you don't have to put the slash input. You can. It's not going to break anything, but you don't have to do it in this case. Now, the problem here is, Edit protected land. If I just go through these, click here to go to Google and visit. Edit protected land. We can see it's a password field. It says it's protected. If we type here, star, 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 star. It's going to not show what I typed, but it doesn't have a label. And that's because we didn't give it one. And there's two ways you can fix this. Now, F -F -H -T if I go up, land. Let's input type equal above land. the um, input type here. Um, to make sure, this is not visually labeled right now either. There's no label that tells the anyone what this is. Like, there's no password word or anything like that. So I can make a label that says Less L A B E L label greater password A S S W O R D password slash L A B B B E L L greater greater L E B A L typed label uh, less label greater password colon just for the text, and then less slash labeled greater. And if we save this awesome, awesome web and refresh the page, awesome web page, edit protected, heading level two, hello, visited link, click here to go to Google password, edit protected. You see a couple things happening. So if I tab into this field, click edit protected it's land. still not going to be labeled because we didn't tell the label that it's supposed to be labeling the password field. Also, you see everything's on one line. And that has to do with that paragraph tag I told you about. So you'll want to make sure that you use those to separate your um, elements into, well, a, a flow, as it were. So you probably put, in this case, I would probably put the link in its own paragraph and then make a new paragraph for the form So to make this not happen. But we have a problem because this is not accessible. Click here to go to Google and visit Edit protected land. And now the way we fix that is we go back to our file. F F .html notepad. Let's input type equals password. It equals password field slash greater. We have an ID equals password field here. And this we can use. So if we go up to a label. Let's label greater pass less D R O W S W O R O W S S A greater L E L greater. And we give the label an Space. attribute named for. As in what is this label for? F O R four equals that takes as its value a an ID of an element. It can oh. be any ID, doesn't have to be the one that's right next to it. Often is, makes more sense, but doesn't have to be. If we put the word password e. field now, that's the ID of the edit a field. S S W O R D F I E L D. Password field quote greater e. greater quote D L E. Check my quotes here. I F D R O W S S A P quote. Yeah. Now if I were to save this. Our awesome, our awesome web page. Search tabs menu, but our awesome web click here to go to Google and visit edit protected land. F, F dot HTML. It is not Why is that? Let's label for equals S, S, W. I'm going to see S, what the problem is. So I'm deliberately, not e, deliberately making mistakes, but I'm deliberately figuring them out e, a, L, as we're here together, because this is going to be things you're running into as well. L, A, B, E, L, space, F, O, R, equal, quote, P, A, S, S, W, O, R, D, F, I, E, L, D, quote, greater, P. A S S W O R D less slash L A B E L greater so character term good. less I N P U T space E Y P E equal quote P A S S W O R D quote space I D equals tick P A S S W O R D F I E L D tick space. I'm going to make sure these quote, double quotes to quote, see if that holds this. 
quote, quote. There we go. It shouldn't matter, but in this case, apparently it is. I'm going to awesome refresh the page. Awesome web page. Edit visited link. Click here to password edit protected. And now it's labeled. Look password at that. Search tab. Awesome. Click here. Password edit protected land. It now says password because that is the text we put in that label. Now, this is also visually visible. Lol, visually visible. Yeah, that's how that works. But this is visually on the screen. The label is there to see. And a lot of developers don't want that to happen. They have like a really cool, super fancy, schmaxy design. And they don't want labels all over the place just because some screen reader users want them to be there. And for that, we have a solution as well. And we need to use ARIA. Now, obviously, the question is, is that always going to be the solution? Because ARIA is only seen by screen readers. So is your interface really this intuitive that it doesn't need labeling? That's the big question you should be asking. Obviously, developers will say yes. Users may have a different idea. But at that point, it becomes accessibility versus people who have no idea how accessibility works. So that's a really interesting one. The way we can do this in ARIA is actually a bit shorter in code. But like I said, it's not visible on the screen. And I'll show that off next, after which we'll take some questions. F .h, f .h. For this to work, we'll remove this label. Let's label for equals password field greater password. Let's slash for equals less label. Let's label selected. For equals select less input type equals password equals password slash greater slash any type less input unselected. Unselected. For equals password field greater password. For equals password field greater password. Let's slash label greater selected. Delete that. Line feed. Selection remove. Let's repeat land. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's input type equals password and equals password field slash greater. Now the way to fix this. Let's slash body greater. Is to go to the end of this input field. Here. Quote space. Slash. And add just one. Um, attribute more, namely aria dash label. So we can do aria, aria dash aria dash label. L A B E L label equals quote T H I S this I S T A S T A S S D R D S L I E D field space S T R E E S R A D R U E R S user space Y O U F F F F S U O Y space space Y O U U F I L L L I I N space B Y I T Y P I S T I P space L E T T E R S letters quote quote slash greater Slash quote. Slash I wish I was joking, but I've actually seen this um, this kind of verbosity in these kinds of labels. So the ARIA label I type says, this is the password field, screen reader users. You fill it in by typing in text or letters. And this happens a lot. Like for example, if you look at Microsoft Teams, uh, you'll get buttons like press space to drill into the options and things like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know how a button works, thanks. But They've been trying to do the job of trying to take everybody along. And they've done such like a big a job of that, that they've made everything completely explicit and completely something you need to hear every time you interact with the user interface. So if I now go to back to my browser, awesome, awesome web page, awesome web page. and I tab into that Click here to go to Google visit field again. This is the password field, screen reader users. You fill it in by typing letters at its protected land. And there's our password field again. Stop, 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 stop. Just type blah, blah, blah in the field. Like you're not missing anything. Now, normally you would have a form element around this field that has some information on where to send this form when you're done with it. For, for example, a function somewhere that makes sure that when you're logging in, your password is correct, but that's far outside the scope of what we're currently doing. So um, what time is it? 7.03 p.m. 03, yeah, this is a good time for some more questions, if any exist. Hey, Armando has his hand raised. All right. And he lowered it. Uh, so I'm assuming, Armando, you do not wish to speak. I'll wait a second just in case. OK, we'll go with uh, Alan, Alan Lemley. Yeah, uh, this question really applied last time around, but my hand got lowered and I wasn't called on. So the syntax, if, if I'm doing a heading, I want to do a heading one and I want it to say start, would the actual syntax be less than H1 greater than space, the word start, another space, then less than H1 greater than? Almost. So you don't need to put the spaces. Um, you don't need the spaces. The tags okay. di directly influence what's between them. So if you put a space, you'll actually have a space in there. Ah. Uh. Um, okay. And the second and the second one should have a slash before the H, so less slash H one greater. But for the rest, you're spot on. Oh, so so the closing 
eight, uh, the closing last stand has a slash in front of it. Is that what you said? The closing yeah. tag the, has a slash before the uh, name of the tag. So not before the last end sign. It's after the last end sign before the first character of the name. Oh, okay. So less than slash H1 greater than. You got it. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, Khalid, would you like to go ahead? Yes. Um, I have a question that's not related about coding HTML, but sometimes when you are filling out forms, if you have a long form and you make a mistake or you, somehow you write the wrong password or I don't know, or mm -hmm. you've missed something, um visually people sighted people will say will know where is the mistake but using a screen reader sometimes you don't know which field you made a mistake so to go back yep. and fix it How, what is the solution for that there isn't one really um so there is a specification called the web content accessibility guidelines or the wcag for short and it has criteria for error a notification where it says if you have a problem put the error next to the field and put a top put a summary at the top where you list what forms weren't um, properly filled in and why not um, but this is very often not done properly and a lot of accessibility problems stem from the fact that people don't do this properly um, there are people who do this correctly um, they will either put the, feed, the the text right next to, below, or below, above the field that you're having trouble with. And some people even go a little further and they make the screen reader tell you through an ARIA Live, which is a, a piece of HTML content that updates and then sends a new text straight to the screen reader. It'll say, hey, your password is too short or something like that. And that is very nice because at that point, when you tab out of the field, it'll immediately go, oh, look, 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 look your, your password isn't right. You might want to go back and fix that. And I find that quite nice because it makes people make sure that people who have, for example, short attention spans or other things going on at the same time, able to just fix the mistake right away and move on with their existence, as it were. And that is harder if you, for example, like you say, have a really long form and there's some problems somewhere, but no one's telling you where. It's just colored red, for example, which is annoying. At that point, you have to guess okay, this needs a particular format. Maybe I did that format wrong or something and I just see if that makes it work. But yeah, there's a whole lot of ways for sighted people to do this. You can make the, the submit button be grayed out. You can turn the fields red. You can uh, put a notification at the top of the page where it says some errors have occurred. Go look at the fields and try again. And yeah, if you're doing it right, you put a summary at the top you put a bit of text near the field or you do this whole ARIA thing where it pokes you when you do something wrong. So yeah, people should be doing this better, but they aren't essentially is the answer to your question. Okay, Zachary, for the first time today has a question, Zachary Morris. Nice. Hello, um, I was kind of wondering, uh, mainly just out of curiosity more than anything, but like how does ARIA know what you're talking about with the ARIA-label? tag like seeing this password field whatever whatever like it doesn't have to like specify like the id or whatever no because we're adding it straight to the element it's it's actually uh about so we're we're telling the input we're giving the intro input uh element an attribute aria label so aria knows that it's supposed to refer to itself oh so wait so you did it before the less slash input then i'm guessing yeah let me read let me read you the oh, let me let me Play you See? Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't hear that very well. Thank you very much. No problem. Good, good question. Okay, Corey Johnson, I don't believe you've asked a question in this round. Your hand is up, so go ahead. Okay, he did lower his hand. Is anybody else still wanting to ask a question? Okay, I think we're we're good to go ahead then, Florian. All right, awesome. Seven oh eight p.m. So <clears throat> we're actually almost at the end of what I was going to be telling you about HTML today because it's um, we're, I don't want to overload you with a whole bunch of different things, but honestly, what we've covered today. So elements nest within other elements. Elements have attributes, and attributes modify the element in some way. 
these are the main pillars of HTML. So obviously what you need to know next is the tags that exist and what attributes they come with. And you can learn that in an afternoon. If you look at, for example, something like uh, W3Schools or Free Code Camp or uh, HTML Dog is one that people like a lot. Um, and this is obviously just the beginning. After that, you'd need to learn some CSS to make it look nice or some JavaScript to make the behavior more dynamic. But HTML is always going to be the foundation if you want to do web dev correctly. And a lot of people don't do it correctly. They haven't learned HTML properly. They just depend on um, JavaScript frameworks, which are essentially tools that based on JavaScript input generate HTML. And you'll find it there where a lot of like people just don't quite know what their tools are doing under the hood and they will um, generate HTML that is not properly formed or incorrect semantically. And that's where you start seeing, for example, checkboxes that don't report as checkboxes because it's just a div element with some JavaScript added to essentially make it behave like a checkbox and make it look like a checkbox, which checks the box pun intended for most developers, but because it's not an actual checkbox, screen readers just see a blank space, for example, or a, a clickable piece of text. And there's no way for you to figure out if the checkbox is on or off. And that's where a lot of accessibility problems stem from not using semantic HTML, not using your native tools that you have available to you. People don't like the look of them. People think they're looking old, like old in the tooth, long in the tooth. and they just want their own sexy, cool design. And well, they can have their cake and eat it too if they know how HTML works, but often they just don't. They just skip that bit and go straight to the CSS. And because browsers are so forgiving about how many errors you make and what you break, it works. It keeps, it doesn't outright break for the majority of people. It's when you, you know, include people who depend on HTML being properly formatted that, um, things start breaking down really quickly. And <clears throat> that's a problem. That is, um, yeah, it's, it's not something that is covered in a lot of beginner uh, programming uh, things. Free Code Camp actually has a pretty comprehensive HTML curriculum. And they even have an accessibility part where yours truly is mentioned one of the exercises. Maybe that's a fun homework exercise for you guys. Find me in the uh, curriculum. I'm in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, HTML, IDs and classes we've covered. Those are really important for CSS and JavaScript because if you want to change, for example, the contents of a button or of a heading, you can do that with JavaScript, but you need the ID first, um, because otherwise JavaScript isn't going to know what element you're talking about. And CSS uses classes a lot for making sure that things look consistent and um, properly formatted. So those are things to look into next. Um, ARIA, we've covered some ARIA. There's a whole lot more ARIA to look at. You can, for example, have a piece of, like very, very similar to the form element, you can have a random piece of text be the label for a form element. That's called the labeled by element, for example. Um, you can do all sorts of interesting things with ARIA that are um, far beyond the scope of, of this lesson, but will be covered in the next course. Again, foreshadowing. And I'm actually going to talk about that just a little bit now. 7.13 p.m. Um, and actually, before you jump into that, uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Would you like to take them now, or do you want to just uh, oh, yeah, wait till no, the That's end. a good idea. We can, we oh. can cover those now. OK. Um, uh, Hamid is uh, asking how to create menus. And I don't know if we have enough time for that right now, but that was uh, what he was going to ask earlier and put it in the chat. OK, so menus are generally lists. So if I make our web page, Google Chrome, see window system for very quickly, I can really quickly show that off. So for example, um, a list is either an unordered list or an ordered list, and then the list items are nested within the list. So if we make an unordered list here with a UL element, list, UL, L, greater. we can then make a list item with LI. List, LI, Lee, greater. A, P, P, L, E, Apple, less, slash, LI, Lee, greater. Less, LI, Lee, greater. B, A, 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 banana, less, slash, LI, Lee, greater. And close the um, unordered list. Less, 
slash U L L greater. We've done that. Now we can close. We can save this. Our awesome web page. Refresh awesome. the page. Our awesome web page. List with two bullet apple. Bullet banana. Bullet apple. Out of list visited link. Click here to list with two items. Bullet apple. Bullet banana. Now we have a menu. Now you have a list. And the way people generally make a menu is put, app, app, for app. example, links within the list items and then put the list in a nav tag at the top. So nav is short for navigation. So what you would do is you would make a navigation tag. Then you'd put within the navigation tag, you'd put a UL or an unordered list. And then within those, you would put list items. And within the list items, you'd put a link to the next page. For example, home, contact us, about us, et cetera. So you have navigation, unordered list, list item, link for the menu. And you do that as um, you add several items to the list and that's your menu essentially. Martin is asking, uh, can you theoretically code a, uh, a page completely in uh, ARIA and make it inaccessible to sighted users? Uh, yeah, you could. <clears throat> You'd essentially have to make the elements empty and make everything ARIA labels. <laughs> you could do that. And Zachary is asking for code or for resources um, to learn HTML. Um, what else does he have listened to? Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or Python. That's probably okay. on some web pages. Yeah, so uh, in session two, am I saying it right? No, session three's notes, you'll find a bunch of resources for that. Two or three, I would have to check, but there is a number of resources in, I think, number three. Uh, free code camp's great for uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Python, I would say either um, educative.io or something else, but I will add some more resources to that page when we're done here. So you can go there to check those out. And Corey is asking, what are you typing these, these tags into? Uh, notepad at the moment. Doesn't really matter. Just something that types okay. text. OK, and then uh, Jasmine just answered that. OK, I think those are all <laughs> the questions. Um, we have a few minutes left. Any other questions? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, pretty much. I think you have Corey with his hand up. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is Jasmine again. Um, just in case there's no time at the end, I wanted to thank you, uh, Florian, for doing this for us, for teaching us about this. This is wonderful material. And I've learned so much in the past few weeks. So I wanted to thank Aww, you. Aw, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for, uh, for that. I appreciate it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I will then um, go into the spiel I was going to go into. We yeah. have 13 minutes, I can do that. So um, like I said, where to go from here? Like essentially there are a number of resources on the class website already. Um, those have been um, vetted as being either fully or mostly accessible and you should be able to start on them should you want to. Um, Python's actually somewhat poorly represented right now. I'll actually work on that to get a couple more uh, Python resources on there. Now, where does this course go from here? Like this is the final uh, lecture of this course. Um, and I've already mentioned this a couple of times on the Discord. If you haven't gotten on there yet, um, it is worth it. There's a, a community forming there and it's really cool to see um, people finding <clears throat> their groove and just asking questions when they have them and just IMing them to either me or the channels. I know the age captcha is annoying. Um, try to muscle through it. A lot of the times you can uh, by pressing the checkbox and then clicking through the accessibility thing that uh, HCAPTCHA has. It, uh, you essentially, the way it works is you fill in your email address on this sign up page that they have. Don't be fooled, you don't make an account. You just get an email at that point. You open the email, you click the um, link in the email. Then there is a thing that says, get accessibility cookie. You click that. And then you try it again. And at that point, it should let you pass. It's super in, in an under, uh, counterintuitive. It doesn't work well at all. They think they're the best thing since sliced bread. I have brought this up with them several times. And they're thinking, like, well, we had people test and it was great. So yeah, um, keep at it. It's worth it. <laughs> um, once you're in, you're in. You don't have to do this ever again. But it's like a little bit annoying at first. Um, but yeah, the Discord server, it's going to stay up. 
people can come there and have discussions, have questions, no problem. Um, <clears throat> and this course is uh, has a sequel. There is a sequel coming in April where we go more deeply into the actual code. Like this course was more, like I said, a get your feet wet kind of idea. Like talk to some of the tools, play with them a little bit. Uh, the next course is going to be more hardcore Python, more ARIA, um, more like coding in general, how that works, what you need to learn. Like a lot of this is uh, findable in different resources, but I'm going to try to make it as approachable for uh, screen reader users as I possibly can. And um, that is going to be the next course, which starts in April. There's uh, going to be a link in the email that we got today for the reminder for this uh for this particular session, I've been told. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm, I'm sure that that happened. Um, I'm going to be yeah, tweeting it out. It's in the chat. Leanne just uh, posted uh, the, the link April 5th for the first, for next month. Fantastic. Yeah, lovely. Um, so that's that's where you go to sign up uh, for that course. Should you really, you know, like me talking at you and teaching you things, that's where you go. Um, and yeah, that's going to be more hard. Like that's going to be more uh, coding um, centered, as it were. We have the tools. We now know where everything is and how everything is called, and now we're going to actually make things. So, we might make a uh, guess the number guess the numbers game in Python. We might make a uh, a thing with Aria um, that's a bit more involved than the one we've done so far. We might make a small uh, web application if we can get that kind of time done. Uh, homework might be a bit heavier for that one because I can only go so I can only go through so much in one and a half hour, and it's going to be uh, requiring a bit more reading on your part, a bit more uh, proactively asking questions, maybe doing some exercises. Um, but yeah, that's what the next course is going to do uh, for the people who were lost uh, and just just couldn't quite keep up. Not a problem. Um, we are like thinking of how we're going to be able to make this more approachable and. Um, I'm sure the folks over at APH will have uh, some kind of um, idea on how to best um, help you guys out. And if that's gonna be me teaching you, other people teaching you, I don't know, but uh, leave no man behind. We can, we can certainly get you uh, unstuck for sure. And the Slido are gonna stay up. I know about the character limit. That is annoying. It's not really something I can do much about. If you, if you can manage it, come to Discord and ask me there. If you can't put your thoughts in the 160 character limit, uh, which I can completely understand uh, if you can't. If you can't get Discord to work, uh, there is also Twitter and email uh, on the class webpage under the contact me page. Um, you can use that to reach out to me as well. Don't do that too much, please, uh, particularly the email, because I'm getting a lot of email and you might get missed. Twitter is fine, um, but you obviously you need to have Twitter for that to work. So Slido, uh, I'd say Discord, Slido, Twitter, email is the preferred um, stuff for like long form stuff. If you have like something you can't say in a couple of words, like if it's a long question, come find me somewhere and I will work it out. I'll hop with you on a Zoom or something of that, of that nature and we'll figure it out. Okay. And Florin, uh, uh, Tezros uh, Tekel has not uh, asked a question, and he's actually waiting in the wings to do so. Yeah, can you hear me? Sure can. Yes, yes, go for it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Florian, and, uh, and also APH for organizing these wonderful uh, training sessions. I mean, the APH website is actually a very good place to be. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there are so many resources there. Uh, so, yeah, my question about HTML5 is, are there indentation rules, as is the case mm. with other coding things? I haven't done them here today, uh, just to keep things oh, yeah. down. The, but you do, yeah, you'll essentially want to nest an indent, um, the way it works with Python. Uh -huh. okay. So your... Um, your, your head's within your HTML, your body's within your HTML, your heading is within your body. So your bo your head is the heading is at that point like twice indented because it's one for the body and one for the HTML and cool. so on and so forth, essentially. Yeah, okay, okay. So I don't know, I, I think I read this somewhere, but I, I think HTML6 is in the pipeline if I'm not mistaken. Is that- well, I'm sure it is, but it's HTML5 came out a long time ago and has been inter iterated on ever since. I don't know if there's going to be an HTML6 soon, but we're like 
at HTML 5.x so far, and these specs move very slowly. So yeah, there will be an HTML 6 probably at some point, but if you and I are going to see that, I don't know. <laughs> oh, OK. All right. Thank you very much. Not a problem. OK, Alan, did you have another question? Your hand is yeah, raised. Yeah, well, so I ahead. had a comment. I had a comment. I was going to say, for the person that was asking, the programming resources are at the end of the session two notes. And there were there were okay. some other resources at the end of the session three notes, but the programming one was in the session two. And thanks, Lauren. You've done a great job. It, it's been a great class. I, we really appreciate your your efforts. Well, I appreciate your saying that. And thanks for looking that up for me. Yeah, session sure. two, session three both have some notes. Uh, go look at those. They're fun. They're cool. They're, they have like a lot of people working on them. They're uh, very usable. Okay. I don't believe we have any other hands raised at this point. Cool. Let's so do you have any, anything else you want to finish up with? Otherwise, we'll turn it back over to Ty. Uh, just want to thank you all for your effort for these last four weeks. Um, I've had a lot of fun teaching you all, and I've had a lot of fun helping you out uh, with notes and with ask, answering questions and things. Um, yeah, definitely don't hesitate to come find me if you're stuck. Like, if you're getting frustrated, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Like, coding can be frustrating, but at some point, you know, salvation needs to happen, and you can come certainly come find me and. I can try to get you unstuck. So don't hesitate. I'm not too busy. Uh, you're not a burden. Please just ask. And uh, maybe I'll see you, some of you, in the next course. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, attention. Thank you so much for teaching this class. And thanks again to everyone who has participated. Um, it's been a great program, and we look forward to the next one. And thanks again to our sponsor, CBW, for all of their assistance in, in this. Audio.